My military story is that uh, after getting out of high school back in 1962, sort of bumming around for a while, I um, decided I wanted to see the world beyond East Texas. And so I, I was staying with a, a cousin of mine in Houston, Texas. It's the first time I'd been in a big city too, by the way. Uh, so I, I alternated between riding up and down the elevators, which I had never seen before in my life, and going and you know looking at ways of getting out of the state, frankly. Started with the Marine Corps, because I liked the way their uniforms looked, and uh, took the test, passed it, told by the recruiting sergeant to come back the next day to finish the paperwork, and that night at my cousin's house, when I told him what I was doing, he reminded me that the Marines spent a lot of time on boats in the ocean. And up until that time in my life, the biggest body of water I had ever seen was a lake. So, you know, not, not exactly a happy camper. Anyway, the next morning, but I did make a promise, and the next morning as I was on my way to the Marine recruiting office, by luck, I happened to pass the Army recruiting office. And I thought, okay, Marines, boats, Army's gotta be on land. I went in. I went in, I took the test, I passed it. The recruiting sergeant for the Army was a little bit more of a salesman than the Marine. He was not about to let me leave. He had me fill out all the paperwork, take the physical exam, and then when he found out that I was not quite 17 yet, put me in his car and we drove the roughly 190 miles to my mother's house north of Houston. I talked her into signing the paperwork because you had to, in, in those days, if you were under 18, you could enlist at 17, but you had to have your parents' signature. So I got her signature. We didn't tell her that, you know, if you're under 17, they don't touch you. Um, and then uh, basically the sergeant and I worked out that I would just wait around until I turned 17 and we would date the paperwork and I would join the Army. And that's basically how I got into the Army. Uh, for several months after that, I worried that the Marines would probably come looking for me because I'd made a promise. It's just how naive a country boy can be. But, but that's how I started my 20-year Army career. Basically, coin toss between the Army and the Marine Corps and the Army's better salesmanship work. It's, it's funny when I think back on it, I, I, left, I left the farm and joined the Army, and I spent 20 years in the Army, and, and I literally, you could say, you know, coming in at 17 and leaving at 37, I actually grew up in the Army, which is a completely different culture. Uh, so when I, when I retired from the Army in 1982, and, and I actually went to work for the Department of State as a diplomat. It was more alien than leaving the U.S. and going to Germany had been. The people who actually go out and do the, the jobs that most people have no idea about that, that make it possible for us to sit in a room like this quietly and have a conversation without worrying about danger, um, Appreciate what they do, and and you know the next time you see a veteran and you say thank you for your service, put put some real meaning into it because in fact they have served and and they have served in ways that you probably thankfully will never have to know.